Boston, the capital city of Massachusetts, in the United States, is one of the most famous and historic cities on the Atlantic coast. Boston is one of the oldest municipalities in the USA, established on the Shawmut Peninsula in 1630 by settlers from England. The city was the center point and witnessed many key events of the American Revolution, such as the Boston Massacre, the Boston Tea Party, the Battle of Bunker Hill, and the Siege of Boston. The famous Boston Tea Party was a protest against taxation on December 16, 1773. The targets were the Tea Act and towns and duties. But what led to this protest and what were the after effects? Let's understand the events in a chronological way. In the late 16th century, England, France, Spain, and the Dutch Republic launched major colonization programs in North America. On the Atlantic coast of North America, the 13 colonies, also known as the 13 British colonies or the 13 American colonies, were a group of British colonies founded in the 17th and 18th centuries. The 13 colonies were New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Delaware, Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia. The early tensions between Britain and colonies started around 1754, during the French and Indian War time, that is 1754 to 1763. During these times, the colonies began collaborating with one another, instead of dealing directly with Britain. These intercolonial activities cultivated a sense of shared American identity and headed for calls like rights as Englishmen and no taxation without representation. American colonists subjected to being taxed by the British Parliament, a body in which they had no direct representation. As Europeans developed a taste for tea in the 17th century, it also became popular in the British colonies. In 1721, British Parliament passed an act that required colonists to import their tea only from Great Britain. By law, the East India Company was first required to sell imported tea at auctions in England. Then, British firms bought this tea and exported it to the colonies, where they resold it to merchants in Boston, New York, Philadelphia, and Charleston. Also, until 1767, the East India Company paid a value-based tax of about 25% to the British government on tea that it imported into Great Britain. Moreover, British Parliament laid additional taxes on tea sold for consumption in Britain. These high taxes, combined with the fact that tea imported into the Dutch Republic was not taxed by the Dutch government, opened a wide door for smuggled Dutch tea at much cheaper prices. In an attempt to compete with smuggled Dutch tea, in 1767, British Parliament passed the Indemnity Act, which lowered the tax on tea consumed in Great Britain and gave the East India Company a refund of the 25% duty on tea that was re-exported to the colonies. But, to help offset this loss of government revenue, Parliament also passed the Townsend Revenue Act of 1767, which levied new taxes, including one on tea in the colonies. Now, instead of solving the smuggling problem, the Townsend duties renewed the controversy about Parliament's right to tax the colonies. The Townsend Acts, or Townsend Duties, refers to a series of British Acts of Parliament, passed during 1767 and 1768, relating to the British colonies in America. They were named after Charles Townsend, the Chancellor of the Exchequer, who proposed the program. These acts placed an indirect tax on glass, lead, paints, paper, and tea, all of which had to be imported from Britain. After the widespread protest, the British government repealed most of the Townsend duties in 1770, but retained the tax on tea. In order to symbolically assert Parliament's right to tax the colonies, American resentment due to abusive enforcement spurred colonial protest, and events like Boston Massacre in 1770 and the burning of the Gatsby in 1772 sparked more tensions between colonists and British. In the year 1773, Tea Act was introduced. The Act granted the East India Company the right to directly ship its tea to North America and the right to the duty-free export of tea from Britain, while the tax imposed by the Townsend Acts remained in force. Colonists in the 13 colonies recognized the implications of the Act's provisions and mobilized opposition to delivery and distribution of the tea. In every colony, except Massachusetts, protesters were able to force the tea consignees 
to resign, or to return the tea to England. In Boston, Massachusetts, Governor Hutchinson was determined to hold his ground. He convinced the tea consignees, two of whom were his sons not to back down. When the tea ship, Dartmouth, arrived in the Boston Harbor in late November, Whig leader, Samuel Adams, called for a mass meeting to be held at Faneuil Hall on November 29, 1773. Thousands of people arrived, so many that the meeting was moved to the larger Old South Meeting House. The British law required Dartmouth to unload and pay the duties within 20 days, or customs officials could confiscate the cargo and unload it onto American soil. The mass meeting passed a resolution introduced by Adams and based on a similar set of resolutions promulgated earlier in Philadelphia, urging the captain of Dartmouth to send the ship back without paying the import duty. Governor Hutchinson refused to grant permission for Dartmouth to leave without paying the duty. Two more tea ships, Eleanor and Beaver arrived in Boston Harbor. On December 16th, the last day of Dartmouth's deadline, thousands of people had gathered around the Old South Meeting House. That evening, a group of 30 to 130 men, some dressed in the Mohawk warrior disguises, boarded the three vessels and, over the course of three hours, dumped all 342 chests of tea into the water. The property damage amounted to the destruction of 92,000 pounds, reported by the British East India Company. According to historian Alfred Young, the term Boston Tea Party did not appear in print until 1834. Before that time, the event was usually referred to as the destruction of the tea. The British government felt this action could not remain unpunished and responded by closing the port of Boston and putting in place other laws known as the Intolerable Acts. The Intolerable Acts were punitive laws passed by the British Parliament in 1774 after the Boston Tea Party. The laws were meant to punish the Massachusetts colonists for their defiance in the Tea Party protest. All of these intolerable acts were viewed as a violation of constitutional rights, natural rights, and colonial charters, and united many colonists throughout America. Exemplified by the calling of the First Continental Congress in September 1774. The destruction of tea was the first major act of open resistance to the British rule over the colonists. And it further prepared them to get united and fight for independence. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for our motivation and give your valuable comments.